the way I told you about Kundalini. And that Kundalini is the pure desire within us. That manifests or is awakened. To give us our self realization. Means the desire is only fulfilled when you get your self realization. Otherwise, it is not manifested, it is just dormant. It is still residual. It has created the whole within us. But until and unless you get self realization, unless and until you become one with your spirit, you have not achieved the manifestation of this power, which will go on making you run and run and run thinking that you have not yet achieved or you have not found out your way. It will be there all the time, sleeping, but giving you a feeling of vacuum. So this power must be made to manifest. But when it manifests, what's it? What happened? Why, let it be, let it be done. Come. What happened? Come here. What happened? Huh? Hmm? It's all right. Oh. All right? Yeah. Good. It's on my bed. Now one has to keep quiet, all right? Hmm. Then <coughs> this power has got certain qualities. The first quality it has got, this is Uddhava, it, 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 uh, it goes against the gravity. It goes against the gravity. You see, a thing rises, it doesn't go down. So, a person has to be aspiring by nature. If a person is not aspiring type, the Kundalini doesn't rise. Because like, you see, when food passes down our stomach, it presses the sides of the intestines. By that these movements of going down takes place. You see, Mahatma? So when the Kundalini starts and starts pressing on the sides of the chakras. She creates a feeling of throwing it higher and higher. So the chakras bounce it upward. All the heavy things all go down. But the Kundalini rises higher and higher and higher because it is like fire. Fire never burns downward. It always burns up. She looks also like fire. And she has the capacity of fire within her. The fire has a capacity to purify and to burn off whatever can be burnt off. It purifies the things which it cannot burn and burns off the things which are inflammable, which can be burnt off. Come along, come forward. So the quality of fire that exists in the Kundalini burns off whatever is useless. Like in our house we find 
all the useless things. Then you take them in the garden and burn them up. Finished. Once for all, they are finished. So when the Kundalini rises, she also burns up all useless things. That you know, all your useless desires, your useless ideas of action, all sorts of useless accumulation of feelings and uh, egos and every sort of a nonsensical thing that is in between. Everything is burnt up by because they can be burnt. They are not eternal by nature. They are not eternal by nature. They are temporarily there. All that is temporary, she burns up. And that's how she enlightens the Spirit because Spirit cannot be burned by anything. But this burning is so beautiful that it burns off all that is bad, stagnating, all that is polluting, all that is a disease, and cools down the system. <coughs> it is very interesting to see how this power of fire becomes a cool breeze. But in the science also you find that electricity can give you hot breeze or cool breeze. You can transform from one to another, but there is no ultimate for these things. They are always reversible. Supposing something becomes a magnetism, you can always convert into electricity. Electricity can always be converted into magnetism. But Kundalini is such a thing that once she burns off everything that is there, that's how you get heat, because she's burning. But when she cools down and becomes cool, then she is not reversible. That's why it is a living process. Living process is never reversible. All dead processes can be reversible. But anything that is reversible, now supposing you are grown up, you cannot become a little baby. Whatever you may try, you may have any number of operations, you cannot become a <laughs> baby. <laughs> now you are grown up. Now you are modern, overdeveloped. You may try anything to become a primitive person, you cannot. You just cannot. Whatever you may try, that will be all very artificial. You may just feel that you have become primitive by wearing some sort of a dress, by feeling that, oh, now there is no modernism in us and now we have become very, very subdued, nothing like that. It is curable but not reversible. But it's a living process. So Kundalini within us expedites the living process within us of our evolution. So the power of Kundalini is to purify. She purifies us like fire. She doesn't purify us like water. Surprising. She doesn't purify us like water. Now water, what does the water do? Water never burns off anything, but it dissolves certain things. It can take in something within itself, see? It can contain some of the dirt within itself. Supposing you put a color in the water, it assumes the color. But Kundalini does not assume the color. She burns her. Do you follow my point? So if you have anything wrong within you, she'll burn it off, but she'll not absorb, she's pure. She cannot absorb those things into her that will pollute her. She cannot be polluted. This quality of fire Say, for example, if you put fire, gold in fire, silver in fire, you can purify it. The pure form comes. That's how you know. But if you put gold and fire in water, nothing will happen. At the most you can wash them from outside. But in and out you cannot do it. So outwardly you can do with other things, 
but with Kundalini you do in and out. The face also looks beautiful, as if some glazing has taken place on the face, a new bright face. It's not sallow, neither it is horribly burning, nor is it pale and ugly looking, but it becomes radiant, radiance. That's what Udalini gives you. It looks also as if a molten iron, have you seen molten iron? Pillar of, supposing you take a pillar of iron and, and heat it to a point where it starts showing, you see, copper, every color in it. Copperish and all sorts of color, you see. See, the golden, copperish and all that, you see, like a furnace. But very silent. <coughs> very silent it works out. Now the sound of Kundalini, I have told you in one of my lectures, how it creates sound. For example, at Vishuddhi it creates the sound of all the vowels that are in Sanskrit language. The English vowels are very few. Sanskrit language are a, a, e, e, u, u, ru, ru, lulu, a, i, o, au, am, a. These are the sounds that Vishuddhi can. She creates sounds on all the chakras. But when she comes to Navi, it becomes a Vani. Vani means information, coded information. That's the nearest to them, coded information. First it is the Paravani, which you don't hear. When it rises from the Kundalini point, means Muladhara chakra, a Muladhara, then it is not heard, there is no sound. When it comes to the stomach, the paravani starts. Then it comes into the center, where in the heart always you hear it, madhyama, where you can hear it, lap, 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 just like heart, properly. With the stethoscope you can hear it. When it comes to Shuddhi, it becomes a witness, means Pashyanti, the one who sees. You might have noticed yourself when you are caught up in Shuddhi, you feel the thing going on here. But here she sees. Then this sound, which is the sound with which, which we speak, when it comes to the throat, it becomes Vaikari. He says, this is even before the Kundalini is there, the Vani, the coded information, the language, which is first only coded, becomes decoded here, which is called Vaikhari, it talks. But after realization, the Kundalini enlightens the Vani, as it enlightens everything else. Because of that enlightenment, your mantras become enlightened. And that's how, when you say a mantra, it is effective, it's lighted. Before this, any mantra said has no meaning. It's just ordinary vani, just like in any ordinary person. So it is called as the mantra which is jagrut, a vacant. So a mantra which is jagrut cannot be created out of a mantra which is not enlightened. Like if you have, say, a earthen pot or an earthen thing like this or this one as it is, and you have all the oil and everything there, still it won't give light till it is enlightened. In the same way the mantra is nothing, it's just a dead pot. Unless and until it is enlightened by Kundalini, it is from 
ordinary vani, which cannot give you enlightenment, and which cannot give enlightenment to the mantras. And that's why these mantras have no meaning at all. A person whose spirit is enlightened and his vani is enlightened, such a person, whatever he says comes true. Whatever he asks for happens. Even before he says something, the desire, the desire within us, which is the paravani, which is the coded information of the desire you have, becomes enlightened. And that's how you get the results. Suddenly you get something, you say, Oh, I have struck the jackpot and mother has done it. That's how it works. The whole system works out this way of Kundalini. So this pure Kundalini creates purity. Without the purity we cannot see anything. Anything that is impure, say, uh, say my hands are not clean, I can't see the lungs. Anything that is dirty, you cannot see the real picture of it. You cannot see the reality if it is not being purified. But even if it is superficially purified or artificially painted, still you can always say that it is artificially painted and we cannot see the beauty of this one because this is done from outside. But Kundalini burns off it, bhasmes out, makes everything into ashes. And whatever remains is the pure gold of the Spirit within us. That's why when people try to raise the Kundalini by wrong methods, she shows her temper. Actually she never gets angry. If Kundalini gets angry, such a person can never exist. Impossible. That doesn't happen. No, no. But it is Sri Ganesha, which is the deity of Sri Kundalini, gets angry. And he creates this problem of heat. Because she is fire. And he is the deity. So the fire of this Kundalini works out in such a manner that your sympathetic nervous gets excited with heat. And one may get even blisters and things if you try any tricks with Kundalini, any unholy behavior. The Urdhvagati of Kundalini, the rising of the Kundalini, is its nature. But when she goes and touches the Sahasrara, that is an important point. If she does not touch the Sahasrara, then the grace doesn't fall in. And the grace has to come in within us on our both sides of the Ida and Pingala Nadi. That's how you feel relaxed. Now how important it is for us to preserve our being before coming to Realization, to preserve it as it is. But we do not preserve, we make mistakes. Kundalini is not forgiveness. She does not forgive. She is not the one who can forgive because her nature is not like the fire. She cannot forgive. Only the Spirit can forgive. Only the Atma can forgive because she is the one who indicates all your problems. She is the one who cleanses you. She has to cleanse you. If she starts forgiving you, your dirt will be left there. As we do, she will clean, oh, it cannot be clean, leave it alone. What to do? She is not like that. If it is not clean, she will burn. Cancer is the cause of neglect of Kundalini awakening. Unless and until Kundalini is awakened, you cannot cure cancer of any kind. So if somebody, say, as Anna's mother was, she might be a relation and she was a good lady, she also tried to take vibrations and all that. She was quite aged. Maybe she might be also a seeker. But it acts best on seekers. 
because the Kundalini has to be awakened, and she will not be awakened unless and until you have aspirations. And if you have no aspirations, if you just try to get it for your cure, you might get cured by an awakening. But it's a very forced action. It's not so natural. There's no suction of it. We can say like that, supposing in this room we light fire, there is no oxygen, it won't live. So we have to have that oxygen within us of our aspirations. If that as- atmosphere doesn't exist, the Kundalini takes time to rise. Unless and until you are realized, you cannot keep Kundalini up there. You may just touch it, go down, again you will touch it, go down. Again, you touch it more. So, as a result of this, some people start feeling the guilt. Why should I have done this? I should not have done that. And all. But after realization, this guilt is a big problem. Even before realization, I find it is because guilt is an escape where all the things are accumulated. Which have to be burned down. See, all things accumulate on the side, very nicely stored or stored away, you see, kept there nicely. So they do not face the Kundalini and get burnt. And that's how the left side of a person goes on recurring all the time, all the time, through these two points of left Navi and left Vishuddhi. Allow the Kundalini to burn it off. Just put this to the fire. And when you put this to fire of Kundalini, it will burn off completely. Don't build up any kind of heat, at least after realization. Before realization, of course, one has to worry a little. But even telling all this, it is convenient to feel guilty. You avoid all problems by feeling guilty, oh, I should not have done, I am sorry, in this language. Very simple, I am sorry, I should not have done, I am sorry. I tell you, I have done a mistake, all right. But you do not say like this, that, all right, I am sorry, forget it. That should be added. <coughs> you see, when, when you say somebody, I am sorry, it's to somebody, he said, Allah, forget it. The other person also should say within you that forget it. <coughs> if you do not do, try that thing. You see, this is very nicely accumulated here all the time. And this feeling guilty is a very convenient method of escaping the truth. You see, showing that you are very frightened, you are very upset, this and that, and just storing up the whole thing up here in the left issue. How will you progress? You cannot progress. With this idea, that you are guilty, you are, even if you are, what are you going to do about it? Want to go to jail? Take two running jumps and go there. <laughs> I would say like that. If I come to Sajo, just go to hell, you can go very fast. There's no deal. But if you are to be saved, accept that you are saved. And do not build up these left to shooting problems. It's a bit too much now. I think it's high time that we should burn. Burn all these things, these guilt, these wrong ideas which always keeps us down. It's like putting something in the neck, a heavy stone, and saying, I can't see what to do. Now the stone must be removed. How can Mataji pull you out? See, whatever I may try, there's a big stone, and that's pulling you down. It's a very big problem, I think, now, because Kundalini doesn't know what to do and how to reach your left Vishuddhi to burn off that nonsensical thing which you have stored very sweetly. Ah, I'm frightened, I'm afraid, I'm sorry. In Sahaja Yoga, certain few English usages are not allowed. One of them says, I am afraid. Even a politician who is so dominating will say, I am afraid. What are you afraid of? Everybody is afraid of you. 
What is there to be afraid of? So this usage is not allowed, I am afraid. This is not allowed at all to say, I am afraid. What are you afraid of? As I said today, that wages of sin is fear. But wages of sin is fear. So if the sin is removed, then the fear should go or not. But still it is like this, there is light. Still you behave as if you, you are in the dark. Still you mean, I can't see, I'm frightened. But there is light, see for yourself. <coughs> this is a thing one should know, that your Kundalini is awakened, that your spirit is shining. Open your heart to this. Accept this. Recognize it. Know that you are a realized soul now and that Kundalini has purified you. Now please do not accumulate this dirt here on the left side because you like it, because it's very convenient to put our faces, to say, oh, it's all. Little bit heat coming up, suddenly the face goes like that. It will be cleaned up. Leave it alone. Let us face it. Somebody gets a little heat, oh, I'm again bad. Again I'm lost. God knows what have I done. <laughs> that right? It happens very commonly. I find suddenly people. <laughs> Without my saying anything, just a little. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> What's the matter? It's very hot. <laughs> It is to you, Mother. You are the soldiers, you are the warriors. But what I find, hands are shaking. Where should I put these swords? <laughs> this is my experience now, that this pouch of the left Vishuddhi is a very difficult thing. My ears are also becoming absolutely clogged with that vibration, so much flowing on the left side, all this left issue is, that I can't hear from the left now. So at least have some pity on me and give up that nonsense of guilt. Even a minute you feel guilty, just look at outside and look at the birds chirping, look at the sunshine, look at the beautiful nature that has given you such a beautiful color and all. Look at that. Just take the beauty within yourself and without and enjoy and give up this miserable look. You should at least look like realized people. Look, at least, if not feel. <laughs> <laughs> so this kind of seriousness has no meaning inside of us. A Swarj yogi stands like this and talks like this and walks like this, normally. <laughs> So feeling guilty is not only speciality of English, but I have seen it with all the Western people have this very good idea of feeling guilty, every day. <laughs> went to France, I told you about French people. As soon as I went there, they warned me for one thing, that Mother, never say you are the happy person, you are very happy. I said, why? Because I'm, I am a happy person. Then should I tell them lies? that they will never believe you and they think you are absolutely ignorant of the truth, you are ignorant of the reality and that you are a, an educated person. You have not read books on shocks for future and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right. But then I really lashed on the French on that and they laughed and laughed at themselves. Name is Rabla. I said, you people, everybody is miserable because of you. Any Frenchman coming anywhere, the people don't know where to sit. They don't know this camel, which side it is going to sit, on whose head it is going to sit. And the camel is very miserable. And here everybody is frightened of the camel, how he is going to behave. Very difficult person if he is French. Everywhere internationally they are known to be difficult. And now here you are, what are you miserable about? And English have taken certain qualities from Americans, which they need not have taken, and some from French. They don't understand their quality of mind is the best. They have taken from here and there, 
And that's how they are also becoming French, you see, bathroom culture. That's what it is. <laughs> and you don't have to learn anything from them. It is they who have, have to learn from them. What have they got? Have they got any scholars? Very few. And you, you are this weakness for becoming miserable and uh, guilty and all that is coming from where I really can't understand. What is there to be miserable? If you don't have a job, you get a dole. Nowhere in the world people get doles. Do you know that? Nowhere! <coughs> Nowhere people get doles. When you get your doles quite all right, you don't start. Germany, France, anywhere you don't get a good dole. So what is there to be miserable? At least you people be happy people. At least the English should show the way. Feel happy in yourself. Then only you'll be able to see the Spirit. Don't be miserable. There's nothing to be miserable. We are special people who have got the blessings of our Spirit. We should all sing, laugh, enjoy. We think with vitality. There's nothing to feel miserable. I mean, after some time you'll find really you'll have to act to be miserable. It would be difficult for you to be miserable for more than five minutes. I can bet on that. With me, same problem. I find it impossible. You see, I try to be very serious. I'm going to now say something serious. <laughs> Suddenly I burst out laughing. Because to me the whole thing is nothing but a big joke on. You don't have these French ideas in your head of becoming miserable for nothing at all. Be a happy thing. Emit happiness, joy to others. There's nothing like future shock, for you at least. There's nothing like future problems. Future is beautiful. Just, you have no idea. But do not lag behind with the big stone tied to your necks. For people who know that they have found the Spirit, they should know that they have found the joy. Spirit is the source of joy. And that should be evident when you talk. No inhibitions, no curbings, it's complete freedom. But do not try to mold yourself into the molds of the people who are not realized. Now you are different, you are changed, it is irreversible. Whatever you may try, say after two years or three years, all of you will be bubbling with laughter. But why not do it now? <coughs> if it is going to happen later, why not have the blossom time now? We start thinking about it, we start worrying about it. There's nothing like that. Our problems are solved, our lives are beautified. Everything is so nice and good just to make you happy. Still, if you are not happy, Still, if you are worried, then the Divine deceives. It will switch. It's like sunshine. If you do not want to face the sunshine, you do not get it. You have to face the sunshine. You just don't get it. Every tree moves to the sunshine. Every leaf tries to be towards the sunshine. They have innately built wisdom in the same way you should be. And you will see that with this, your life will change completely. Every moment you will enjoy Every minute of life you will enjoy Everything that you do, you will enjoy Every small thing you do, you will enjoy People are sometimes amazed with me also. Once I climbed up a place called Palitana, which is about seven miles one has to walk, with my son-in-law, daughter, and they said, if you cannot go up, you better sit on those pallet wheels and all that. No, I said, I can walk. Yes. I walk. And I was just enjoying, you know, I never felt I was walking on a thing like that because I was enjoying the nature, I was enjoying the people, how they were coming down and how the people were going up and all that and the gates and things. And I was just enjoying all that. And when we reached there, these people who were going with me absolutely sat down and they sat down, ha! <laughs> and I also sat down with them and looked up and I said, look at this. So many elephants of they made, and everybody's tail is differently twisted. How they must have thought of so many permutations and combinations? 
My son in law said, How did you see the cane? Oh, often really fun when you are so very tired here. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I, I just spontaneously saw the thing. I said, How surprising that they have twisted the tail of the elephant. There were many elephants created, you see. At least there must have been hundred elephants in that pattern. Everybody's tail was twisted differently. I said, It's so easy. I mean, imagine in hundred elephants to twist the tails in different ways, hundred ways. It's remarkable for me. He said, how could you see the tail? We are so tired, we want some water. <laughs> uh, that's what it is. It is inexhaustible. This power of enjoyment is inexhaustible. I want you all to enjoy that, to drink that nectar of your spirit and to forget about all these artificial problems that you have. Just enjoy because now you are drenched in your spirit. So enjoy that. Why not? Some people haven't got it, they will get it also. Don't worry about anyone. They will all get it, they will all have to get it. All those who are seekers will have to come. It's nice you have come earlier. It's a nice thing. But now do not stop your progress by lingering with this load around your neck. Let the Kundalini take you. She likes light things. She is a light thing herself, that's why she writes. Everything that is heavy within you, she will burn. But do not make yourself additional heavy. May God bless. I'll have some water, please. We well, brought this gentleman here. We brought him. Aha! Uh-huh. Oh, anyway, it's great, you know. Some thieves came into our house. And this heavy gentleman had come from India. Very bad, that is. And the thieves said that some silver put in the drawing room. That selected all the silver, put it on a tablecloth, and put the whole thing on the band. And then suddenly, God knows what happened. They just ran <laughs> leaving that there. And this gentleman was there in the passage. They just ran. Can you imagine these things? I mean, they are burglars, competent, absolutely experts. Nobody could believe it except that we saw some steps and our door was opened up. Otherwise nobody could believe it, not here rock step. But they did not take even a spoon. God knows what happened. <laughs> I was not there. <laughs> <laughs> this one we brought from India. We were very hefty people who brought our luggage to leave it there. And they brought this one. He said, this is a very heavy gentleman from India. <laughs> Both got exhausted. But there's somebody in here, Rujana. This is Kartikeya. Hmm. This is the fire of Christ. This is the one that is going to come. Really, the fire of Christ. The destroying power, Rudras. This is one of the Rudras of Christ. Hmm. It's quite warm, I think. How are you? All right? All right, sir? Mm. So, come. I would like to see all the children on my feet today. <laughs> 